He did nothing, says the Mexican family that was scammed by a fake immigration lawyer. This is just an article, one of many, on Telemundo's website that describes the hardships of immigrants who are getting taken advantage of by fake legal service providers in the United States. This has been a huge problem throughout the United States for the last few decades. And in fact, New York State, where my office is operating, passed a law a few years ago specifically targeting the unauthorized practice of law to make it easier for prosecutors to go after these people who target the most vulnerable segments of our society. Today, I'm going to talk about how to avoid being scammed by fake legal service providers. USCIS sent me a letter saying that I had to leave the US within 30 days because the papers hadn't been filled out properly and the lawyer hadn't even submitted the green card application. So he did nothing. We didn't have any more money. We had to sell all our property in Mexico and try to start the whole process over. The guy stole more than $9,000 and when we confronted him, he said, I didn't tell you I was a lawyer. This is one of many stories. And when I say many, I'm talking countless. I've been seeing stuff like this happening in New York State where I'm operating for like the last decade. Um, I know this has been a pervasive problem for the last few decades at the very least. And it's really unfortunate. It makes my blood boil to see these people taking advantage of the most vulnerable victims, the most vulnerable members of our society. Um, this is a really difficult topic for me to talk about, but I want to talk about some examples I've seen followed by a few things that you can do to protect your family. Immigration fraud is really widespread in the immigrant communities, especially from what I see in Spanish speaking communities. And from what I observe, these legal service providers who are not lawyers, are oftentimes misrepresenting what they can and cannot do. They're actually providing legal advice, which at least in New York is super illegal, and they're oftentimes ruining people's lives. In my experience, when a client comes to me and says, but we paid this guy $15,000 for this paperwork and he said it didn't work out, you know, what I'll do is a Freedom of Information Act request to see what paperwork was actually submitted for this person, for these clients. And oftentimes, nothing was submitted. Unfortunately for the clients, but also somewhat fortunately, I would prefer if no paperwork was filed and that if they were only robbed to a situation where they were robbed and fraudulent paperwork was filed. Because that second situation where false or fraudulent paperwork was filed, I might not even be able to fix that. All the money in the world might not be able to fix that. So this is a really serious problem. What can you do so that this doesn't happen to you? Well, the first thing you should do is make sure the person you're gonna consult with is actually a lawyer. You can typically look up on the state Bar Association website, or at least here in New York State, we have an attorney registry. It's on the screen. It will show you who all the licensed lawyers are. It'll show you when they were licensed to admit practice and whether they're in good standing or if they're suspended or disbarred or whatever their status is. So that's the first thing. Make sure the person you're dealing with is actually licensed to practice law and give legal advice. The second thing that you can do is ask the person if they have experience with immigration matters. Now, assuming they're a lawyer, right? You've already checked, you've Googled their name, you've checked the registry. If they're a lawyer, right? And you just want to make sure you have the best person for the job, ask them, what's your, what's your experience with immigration matters? When I went to law school, I mean, here in New York state, you're just licensed to practice law. There are some exceptions, but for immigration, there is nothing specifically that makes me an immigration lawyer other than my experience. 
There's no specific license for immigration lawyers. So it's important to work with someone who has experience with immigration matters and is competent in that field. The third thing that you can do is check reviews for that attorney to make sure that other clients were happy with them, to make sure that, you know, it didn't end up poorly for other people who've worked with the lawyer. Yes, I know reviews are not always super accurate and they could be misleading, but it's at least a starting place so that you can be informed about the person who you're working with. There's one point of clarification that I would like to make, and this refers specifically to the Spanish speaking community. In a lot of Central and South America, many countries, Notario Publico, Notary Public, is a lawyer or even higher. These people have the ability to help you with your legal problems. That's not true in the United States. A notary Public and a lawyer are not the same thing. Lawyers are oftentimes notary publics in a lot of states, but they're not the same thing. So if you go somewhere like Queens, New York, you'll see these little shops every couple of blocks. Notary public, immigration, taxes. A lot of these places don't actually have an immigration lawyer or any lawyer. It's just some guy who's learned how to do tax returns, knows how to fill out some immigration forms and just created a shop and they do really well. And sometimes they charge even more than immigration lawyers. And I've had clients say to me like, you know, he charges $10,000. What do you mean he's not a lawyer? I'm like, well, if you had hired me, it would have been a little less than that. And I'm actually a lawyer. So it's, it's really a sad situation all around. Be careful, do your due diligence. And if you're ever not sure, ask a lawyer who you already know, who they would refer you to. That's probably one of the best pieces of advice that I can give you. See you next time.